know, my answer is sort of low tech, which is that I really do believe that the foundation of all successful collaboration is something very human, and that is uh, a sense of trust, um, a sense of, you know, being in the trenches together, you know, trying something new, failing, flailing, picking yourself up, and, you know, moving moving along um, together. And, and in a very real way, trust is the basis of all collaboration and all innovation and more and more organizations are waking up to the power of openness and transparency. So openness in the broadest sense of the term, you know, openness to ideas from everywhere, openness thinking about, you know, the boundaries of our organization are sort of artificially prescribed. Uh, we could be working with and connecting with people from all over uh, if they're doing relevant work or have a relevant contribution to make. And then transparency really being about everybody kind of being tuned in to what's happening in a global sense and having a picture of that. I think for so long, this ruling ideology of control in organizations, you know, controlling people, controlling information, controlling deviations from the norm, all of that is just, you know, stops collaboration in its tracks. And when you have organizations that are really open about, you know, information, sharing work in progress, uh, you know, sharing kind of the half-baked, unpolished, kind of messy stuff uh, that happens when you're trying to do something truly new. Those organizations tend to be quite collaborative. What we're trying to do with the mix is help make progress in making all organizations truly resilient, truly innovative, truly inspiring. And for us, that means just, you know, fit for the future and fit for human beings. And that requires sort of a, a great unraveling of the way organizations have worked for 100 plus years, you know, uh, or even longer since the invention of hierarchy and, and bureaucracy. Um, and, and not all of that needs to be unwound, but certainly the kind of modern industrial corporation where the ruling ideology is all about control, um, where, you know, people are kind of forced into the institutional straitjacket of obedience and, and conformity, you know, all of that stuff uh, really does need to go. And, you know, we, we kind of looked at you know, the internet broadly understood as a source of inspiration. Because if you look at kind of the waves of technology out there, there was sort of, you know, re-engineering and IT revolution, and then there was kind of business model revolution, and I think we're, we're on the verge of what we would call sort of a management model or an organizational model revolution, and I think thanks to the web and related emergent technologies, we can, you know, imagine organizations that are large but not bureaucratic that are coordinated but not centralized and controlled, that are efficient but not inflexible, and that are disciplined but not disempowering. In other words, organizations that transcend a lot of the trade-offs uh, that big corporations um, deal with and also that, you know, fast-growing startups have to eventually contend with. You know, do we, do we grow and scale and, you know, make an impact or do we stay kind of human and creative and scrappy? How do we transcend send those trade-offs. And I think what really inspired us and what we're always looking for and what we're trying to surface and promote um, are forms of organization that are inspired by and driven by what I would call sort of these web-based principles, which are things like you know, all ideas compete on equal footing. Um, you know, uh, your contribution matters more than your credentials. The wisdom of the many, you know, trumps the authority of the few. Uh, power comes from sharing, not hoarding. Uh, you know, mediocrity gets exposed quickly. You know, all these things that anyone who's at all webby is kind of familiar with um, that, that define some of the best uh, organizations on the web and the web itself. I think these principles are infiltrating all organizational life, or they should be, and more importantly, they're kind of woven into the DNA 
of how the next generation wants to work and to live. And it's not just sort of a millennial thing. I think, you know, anyone who is alive and awake and kind of, you know, up for fighting the status quo uh, understands the, the, the compelling nature of those principles. And I guess the question for us was, how do we help organizations, you know, migrate uh, from here to there toward those principles as the ruling principles of organization. And as you know well, this requires kind of rethinking and disrupting every fundamental organizational management process there is out there from, you know, how you create a budget to how you make decisions to how you set strategy to how you hire and reward people and all those things need to be kind of rethought. certainly seen some incredible experiments in, call it democratic capitalism, call it um, natural hierarchies and leadership, or call it, uh, you know, what you will. Uh, there, there's different names for this wherever you look. Um, and I'm thinking of, you know, classics like W.L. Gore, which has been an experiment in natural leadership and, you know, deeply distributed responsibility and accountability and really rigorous management systems um, around those principles. It's been ahead of its time for over half a century I and mean, really kind of amazing um, to more recent organizations that are popping up. Um, you know, we like to we like to talk about, you know, the Morningstar Company, which is a tomato processor out on the west coast of the U.S. and, um, you know, really kind of intensive industrial organization that is probably one of the most deeply self-managed and peer-managed organizations out there. And I could rattle off a bunch of examples, but, you know, really the foundations of this whole conversation and this whole movement that we're both involved in, it, you know, it's trust and freedom. And I do think, you know, not just being an American, but, you know, freedom is the the founding principle um, for for all of these organizations. And, and when you think about how how organizations, and it's not just business organizations, it's churches, it's schools, it's not-for-profits. They've been ruled by this ideology of control, and for very good reason, you know, bureaucratic control has been, you know, really productive for a really, really long time, but not when you want, you know, imagination and initiative and passion and you want to tackle complex global problems and you want to involve people from every corner, we need a different form. And I do think whatever the exact form it is, and there will be many different iterations of it, it does start with those basic principles of trust and freedom when you think about how people connect and congregate and coordinate and commune and resolve problems and do something uh, meaningful together. The entity that created the mix is something called the Management Lab, and it's called a lab for a very specific reason, which is that we felt that, you know, People running organizations and people inside organizations should be treating those organizations like experimental laboratories, you know, testing new ideas, iterating on them, and, you know, continuing to, you know, build on this vehicle that's getting them where they want to go. Um, and I think there's so much sort of stasis in terms of how things happen inside of organizations that that, that was a real uh, wish of ours and a hope and a thought that that's where things were going. And I will say that the you know the most powerful and high impact um, case studies we've found, but also um, you know new ideas have all be been based in this practice of experimentation and failing fast and learning and iterating and you know it's sort of like the the mashup of you know agile lean um, you know from the software world meets uh, design thinking we were talking a little bit earlier about the the need for activists inside organizations and I think that spirit of 
activism and, you know, I, I sort of call this group of, you know, this band of merry troublemakers, you know, the mavericks, the heretics, the, you know, irregular people doing irregular things and standing up to the status quo. Uh, we need those people and we need organizations and institutions, whether it's the media or, um, you know, whatever, whatever other body that respects the work that they do and respects what we have to learn from the fringe. And we talk a lot about learning from the fringe at the mix. And, and um, that's always where I've kind of hung out from Fast Company to my book to, to this. And, I, and it's because I think that's where the future starts to unfold. And more and more, I think the most successful leaders are those that sort of create a haven for heretics that recognize the value of the of the mavericks and the activists and you know don't just sort of tolerate them but invite them in and you know invite in contrarian and unorthodox points of view and again i've been really excited by how many people are actually open to that idea? Um, because you know the the business world, especially, is sort of ruled by conformity, and and um, there are a lot of there's a lot of formality as well. Uh, and I just think we're living more and more in an age of you know heretics and mavericks and activists in a really good way. They're not trying to burn the house down; they're trying to figure out a better way to do it all together. And and I just love that. That's really inspiring to me. Mm-hmm. 